All right, I'm the shortest one here for a Dutch stage. So it's all right. So see me halfway here. It's all right. I can't speak this way. Um, well, the star is not in this podium. It's actually in the picture. So a rock star or a green star, however you call it. And I'm uh, going to develop to the story of this initiative we have here. Um, I will not uh, say what island is it, but it's close to the Rapa Nui, Rapa Pui. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, well, let's, ah, I have the control. So let's begin. Um, I don't want to talk uh, too much about uh, what we do as a strategy in HP. Actually, I just want to focus on uh, just this quick introduction that uh, when we talk about sustainability, we are actually, what we do, we focus on the impact that we do in our sustainability initiative. That's what we call a sustainab sustainable impact. And of course, focusing on these three pillars you see here, people, uh, uh, planet, and also about the communities where we serve. Uh, when we talk about planet, actually, it's about increasing business, but not our footprint. And in terms of people, it's about protecting uh, people's rights and human rights in every country where we have operations, and also our suppliers and partner manufacturers as well. And in terms of uh, community, we want to be a good neighbor. We want to be a cl good global neighbor, and it's a goal that we established uh, our founders, uh, uh, Dave Packer, in 1957. So that's way before um, people start to think about sustainability. Club of Rome, I think, was established in the 60s, actually. So um, that was a few years before. Do you mind if I get a different yeah. microphone? Because uh, I tend to move around. <laughs> Number one. So just to give you the context of this presentation, we want to reinvent uh, our supply chain. And actually, HP was the first company in the IT sector who disclosed the entire cargo footprint many years ago. And this is just a snapshot uh, in terms of a percentage of what is divided between the product use, uh, uh, supply chain, and also operations. And you, we're going to focus a presentation in this side on supply chain. So it represents 46% of a total cargo footprint. Uh, what is the number tra traducing to carbon footprint in total, CO2 equivalent? It's around 18, 19 million CO2 equivalent, actually. Um, yeah, actually, I have a number here. It's around seven, 18, 18 million. And this is the four uh, subcategories we have divided our uh, carbon footprint in the supply chain. And of course, as you see here in, the, in your left side, that is about materials extraction. Uh, and in that sense, of course, having this uh, conference here in Netherlands where the Dutch government, they place a lot of emphasis in the circular economy. It's, it makes sense that uh, we are having this conversation right now. Because for example, in our side, we, by us identifying the, this amount of CO2 releases only by extracting material and, and manufacturing, that's why we want to place emphasis um, in addition to any reduction in, in the, during the product uh, use phase, actually. So the scope of our presentation is going to be focused on that side of our impact. I'm just going to bring you, um, up from now on, a example of what we are envisioning, how should be this change on the future, how we reinvent our supply chain. And of course, you might know that we deliver printing and computer products. And uh, for printing, you need cartridges, either toner or ink cartridges. The printers at your home mostly, most likely, use ink cartridges. So this is a typical ink cartridge that we deliver to the market. And the good thing that we established around 27 years ago is a program to basically collect back our cartridges in order to feed back our production to make new cartridges. So what we call HP closed loop recycling. So basically, we facilitate um, having uh, our customers uh, return the empty cartridge that eventually is going to be sent to the recyclers, then compounders, and meets with additional materials, also virgin plastic, in order to produce a new cartridge. I will not talk about all the process. I'm just going to focus on this small 
portion. So of course, when I entered the room, I saw all these plastic bottles, and I, I got, of course, inspired <laughs> um, in a good way. Um, so I saw in cartridges all over in my head. But basically, I say this because HP uh, collects around one million plus empty plastic bottles, PET, um, from the market in combination with cloth hangers, our old cartridge and virtual material in order to produce a new ones. Why I mentioned this one million bottles a day, and uh, it was actually quite timely, this exercise we had before, because I felt so in tune with my little island. Uh, and actually, I have a picture of the island here. <laughs> um, this is actually the typical developing country or developing island, having not so many resources for developing infrastructure or having non-infrastructure to deal with waste. This is a particular case. I will not mention now the name of this place, but I have to say that um, when I was a student, um, master's degree student, uh, about 10 years ago, I was myself, I'm originally from Venezuela, and I was in the US back then, and in around, yeah, nine, 10 years ago, we were really struck. Um, in America's every, every year, there is a news about this island. It was a coup, there was something going on, natural catastrophe, hurricanes, when the gentleman from Rotary Club mentioned. Um, this time, it was hit by an earthquake. Completely shred the island. What island is this one? This is Haiti. Um, Haiti shared the island with the Dominican Republic. Unlike the Dominican Republic, somehow they managed to be well off. Haiti is really, really in not a good shape. They were facing with this earthquake. The whole infrastructure was completely destroyed, including the water infrastructure. So you might see here that um, um, in addition to the waste collection system was completely vanished. They have to rely on water bottles to drink water. They don't have desal the desalination plants, nothing like that. They just rely on plain and simple water bottles you have on the, on the table. Um, so, of course, it's a small island, and uh, anything close to 50K to the coast, can be ocean, could be lake, could be, uh, could be a water corp, then it's a potential ocean-bound plastic. Of course, we have a picture of a prototypical one that will be bashed away in the Caribbean Sea, which is, I have to say, very beautiful, too many beaches, very beautiful beaches, and uh, it, it is a shame it would be all the, the marine species and all the beauty from the island destroyed by this. So, what happens next? We have, of course, a population in Haiti after the catastrophe. They find ways to survive. And you here you see waste collectors. That basically collects uh, waste from all over the island. Uh, not only in the rivers, water cups, but everywhere. Because you can find all these bottles everywhere. So in order to make a living out of this, they collect and they sell it for a recycler. But what's going on? With no supervision, with no coordination, with no support, basically, they can only barely sustain, sustain their own way of living without providing education, without providing shelter, just food on the plate, and barely. So, you actually, I have a video right now. Mettez le ballon. Vous voyez les stars. Un bâton nous fait plus mouvement, plus mouvement, plus passer ça pour nous capables de nettoyer le pays avec Pogina en avant la CIA. Moi, je viens. Tout petit ami qui vient nous aimer. On 
So in this video, I wanted to introduce the story of Rosette Antidor. She lost uh, the husband in the 2010 earthquake. No way of uh, creating living wage for her. What we do here is basically we buy those empty plastic bottles at a higher market price. And that difference between the market price, they are able to basically use that difference to, to pay for school, pay, uh, pay for shelter, and other services that are around delivering high quality plastic bottles. Uh, something really important about this, it, actually that's the reason you see different colors of plastic is I believe somebody uh, mentioned before about uh, how complex it is to recycle different colors of plastics. And in our case, because the cartridge has, the color is dark, we don't have that issue. So basically, we not only collect the, pla the uh, transparent color, but also the different colors. And again, we enable to uh, further cleaning the, the complete island. This is a, the recycle center. Um, it's, uh, it was way, way established before HP uh, took part of it, this initiative. And basically, we just try to support and see the needs and collaborate with them, how they can better process the material in our behalf. This is actually the end result of it. And I think we can uh, uh, we can say that at this point, actually at the end of last year, we have collected around 25 million plastic bottles that otherwise would have been washed away to the to the Caribbean Sea, in that sense, which is actually really decent number. And and, and actually from the top of my head, I believe this is the most ocean-bound plastic that any company has collected to your this date, and all these plastic bottles are actually used in the, in the cartridges nowadays. And later on, I'm gonna share a little bit uh, in what are our future ideas in terms of how to use that plastic as well. And actually, this is important to mention because um, it's not only one or two people who work in there. Actually, I recall when we produced this video a couple of years ago, um, there were around 200 people being impacted by this initiative. And uh, the, until the few months ago, actually, this uh, initiative has grown to support to, to uh, 795 people. So going from nothing to s almost 1,000 people, it's, uh, it's something that we support. It's an initiative we want to really put more uh, resources and somehow replicate in other regions. Because, of course, uh, we have the case of, uh, of Haiti. But uh, what about uh, cases uh, like in Southeast Asia? What about India? What about South, uh, China? There are many places that might face a similar problem that might not have a proper collection system, that might have excess of plastic washing away in the ocean. And uh, what about not only HP, but other companies actually put their capabilities to understand what's the potential to use this pl plastic to be used for manufacturing of additional new products. Here is actually an example of a, um, a colleague of mine uh, sharing with one of the leaders of our, one of our NGOs who collaborated with us in Haiti. It's called Threat International. And this gentleman, his name is Richard, Richardson Antoine. And he basically, he's a country manager for Haiti for this NGO. And he helps to provide all the information to the collectors on how 
they will collect it, how they're going to clean it, how they're going to be put, uh, let's say, environmental health and safety measures in order to make a proper worker safe environment for, for them. Going back to our pillar of the people, we try to protect not only people working for HP, but in the supply chain as well. Not only that, it's not about uh, employment, but it's also about providing uh, education opportunities in the, in the, to the ch children of the workers of this initiative. So by now, they are enrolled 100 uh, children on school that otherwise would have gotten this opportunity before. And with this, of course, if we cover shelter, we cover cost needs, we cover education, but also we are covering with technology as well. So being part of collaboration with recyclers, being part of collaboration with local NGOs or international NGOs as well, give us the opportunity to release an initiative that can help us to get back uh, ocean-bound plastic. And of course, why not providing a, a, a technology that helps educate these, uh, these children of the workers? It's a win-win situation, of course. We're trying to just not only focus in our environmental pillar or our people's pillar or community pillar, but how to find a way to decrease our carbon footprint for the supply chain, touching each one of these pillars that I talked to you before. And this is my favorite slide, uh, because um, basically what you see here is a printer installed on the school, printer use cartridges in cartridges, and they are basically those collectors and the sons of the collectors who are actually printing on a cartridge whose parents collected initially that otherwise would have been polluting their own island. So with this, I think it's a truly closed loop initiative. Not only from environmental savings, not only circular economy, but it's about social, it's about empowering people, it's about giving human rights, human decency, because we all are all part of this war at the end. Here, actually, I was talking to gentlemen before on the break about washing lines, and actually, this in order to in, for, um, expand this initiative, we're going to install a new washing line um, uh, made in Germany. It's going to be ready in 2020. That basically, in order to fight the, um, have a proper quality cartridges. Of course, we need proper quality plastic, in this case, from the, um, from the plastic bottles. And having this line installed will uh, actually further guarantee that the plastic we collect from Haiti will have the highest quality that we demand and our customers demand. All these people in the picture actually is a fully close the loop of a story in the sense that we have here on the right side people who support us on the educational side also environmental health and safety. Uh, Mr. Richard, uh, Richardson Antoine uh, from Threat International. Uh, Rosette, who is one of the 795, 98 uh, people we support in the island. And we have the recyclers based in the Haiti and our partner compounder, plastic compounder who are based in Canada, um, who ultimately after that part of the process, all the plastic goes being shipped to, to HP. And just to conclude, uh, yesterday we launched the latest sustainability report for HP. And uh, we are proud to, to say that this initiative has uh, actually helped to, because of the excess of plastic we have, to release to the market a new, the first uh, display win ocean bound plastic. This display has about uh, 16 different parts that contains ocean bound plastic. And of course, our idea is to not only keep static until only the personal system, but actually try to further expand these commitments. And for that reason, we announced that uh, we want to uh, achieve by the year 2025 around 30% of post consumed recycled content in all our products, both printing and computing. So, for this.
and you can applaud because this is the end of my presentation. So <laughs> thanks. <laughs>